Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Sci-Fi UI. My name is AJ, I am Texas Green Tea on Twitter, and I have been working in the XR industry for six years. I've written code and done UX for a lot of cool projects. Most recently I was a lead developer on the Spotify app launch on Magic Leap, and I am very interested in the future of UI. When I say UI, most people think either mouse and keyboard, touch screens, swiping, pinching, launching windows, clicking buttons, all of that is straight up horse carriage technology. I'm interested in the automobile. We are half a decade into this new era of spatial computing, and we are just scratching the surface of what UI will be in the future. And because I want to help build that future, I feel like I need some inspiration. And that's why every week I'm doing a deep dive into a sci-fi film or TV show for the first six weeks of 2020. We are going to look at scenes that have volumetric digital content, and we're going to break them down. And the show we'll be covering today is... The Expanse. This is arguably the most immersive sci-fi story in recent history. They were cancelled by the Sci-Fi Channel and then resurrected by Amazon. This show spared no expense on user interface. There are screens everywhere. In fact, one of my biggest pet peeves about the show is that there are so many screens. I'm, I'm a UI nerd, don't get me wrong. I get distracted by the little details in the background, and the details in the show are really good. The depth of detail in set design is unparalleled. And since the actors are constantly surrounded by screens in almost every single shot, practically every single screen is a hero set piece that must be specific to the dialogue in the script. That's really hard to pull off. They must have had huge budgets to design these screens just based on the sheer number of them. But this is where my pet peeves come in. Screen, 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 screens, and more screens. And wait a sec. That, that's a, a volumetric hologram. Okay. And there's another one. And wait, that, that's a screen, but it can produce a hologram. But it's being used to produce a slightly bigger screen. I'm sorry, this might look snazzy, but if we ever end up using holograms for nothing more than to turn our phones from portrait to landscape automatically, I will straight up hacky sack everybody's phone right out of their hands. But seriously though, this goes to the heart of the matter. If you have interactive holograms, why would you still need screens at all, right? A, a hologram can make a screen, and it can put it anywhere, and it can make it any size. In fact, they do that very thing several times in The Expanse. So why are there screens everywhere? Well, I'll tell you. It's the same reason that every single 80s sci-fi movie had screens that looked like DOS prompt command lines. That's what a computer looked like in the 80s. Therefore, that's what it will look like in the future, right? Even though it's obvious they were wrong about that in the 80s, it's still really hard to admit that we'll probably be wrong about it in 2020. So everyone in the Expanse has a smartphone in their pocket. It's a snazzy see-through smartphone, sure, but UX-wise it's pretty much identical to our computer experience today. If 80s sci-fi has taught us anything, it's that most movie tech will not stand the test of time, and you can bet whenever the tech is practically identical to today's tech, that's the thing that will look most dated 20 years from now. All of that said, I can't hold my pet peeves against the production crew of this show because this show required thousands of UI shots. Even though volumetric holograms are clearly possible in this narrative, the producers of The Expanse had to face a harsh reality. Holograms cost money. VFX budgets are way higher than they used to be 10 years ago, but that doesn't mean that you can afford to pack holograms in every single scene. In fact, from working in the VFX industry, I can tell you firsthand that some of these hologram shots cost hundreds of thousands of dollars a piece. If every UI in the show were a hologram, they would have broken the bank in season one. And that's probably why there are literally zero hologram shots in season one. And here's where the can of worms really opens, because if they can do holograms, but most of the time they just use smartphones and regular monitors, there should be a reason for it in order for the world to have continuity. They never really address this in the show, so we're left to assume it's probably some kind of cost issue. Their smartphones can produce holograms, but not big ones, I guess, and only government councils and fancy warships can afford the really big ones. That works for me story-wise, but it means that there are very few instances for us to actually see a hologram on screen, which I'm sure made the producers of the show very happy, but there's less eye candy to go around. In reviewing the entire show, I found about a dozen instances of interactive volumetric holograms in the entire show, most of them showing up in the later two seasons. So let's dig into some of these shots. Another big pet peeve of mine is when sci-fi UI doesn't have a clear use. 
When it's a hologram, often it's just used for eye candy and close inspection reveals that no one took the time to imagine the UI would actually do anything useful in the real world. Any hologram can be good eye candy, but I find a hologram that has eye candy along with zero utility to be very distracting. Sort of like a Starbucks cup in a fantasy show. Here's the strategic command center of the UN on Earth where they're strategizing a potential war with Mars. Utility-wise, this is one of the better shots. Notice right from the top that the hologram actually appears to penetrate through the surface of the table. Using volumetric content to expand the size of the room, to punch holes in walls or the floor or a tabletop, to reveal more content beyond, that's extremely useful. This shot gets a few points just for that. But let's back up to this angle right here. This is the first time we get to see a user interacting with the hologram. So this general decides he wants to show a different hologram to the whole room, and what does he do? A quick series of hand gestures. Let's check it out in slow motion. There's an expand motion, a rotation motion, and a selection motion. This will be a recurring theme in lots of shows. Almost exclusively, Hollywood depicts holograms being controlled with a series of hand gestures, which I find really interesting since the XR industry is just scratching the surface of figuring out how to get hand gestures to work in practice. So this shot gets a few points for mapping clear gestures to specific actions that I think are pretty obvious to the audience, but if you look really closely, did anyone spend the time to carefully analyze whether those gestures will actually work in the real world? Let's find out. First, the expand gesture. When does it begin? When does it end? Notice he moves fluidly from the expansion to the rotation without any visual indication that he wanted to change. Obviously, there's some sort of scanner watching his hands and interpreting the motion, but w when we ask ourselves, can this be built in real life? The first thing we have to answer is, can the computer understand the gesture? And maybe they have really good AI, but is the AI better than a human being at understanding a human gesture? I watch this and I can't understand exactly when he wanted to switch to rotation. So could the AI figure that out? Maybe, but it'd be really difficult. Anyone who is trained in AI can probably tell you there are laws of diminishing returns that dictate that for a lot of humanoid things like hand gestures, computers might get really good at it, might get even slightly better than we are at it, but will they ever get way better than us at it? And this brings us to the first factor in my sci-fi UI rating system, control. It's another common thread in sci-fi UI. The lazy way to design a sci-fi UI is to say that the AI is really smart. It always knows what the user wants. I'm a software engineer who works on volumetric UIs, and I am not confident that we will ever train computers to know exactly what you want 100% of the time. In fact, if AIs ever became that smart, they'd be really dangerous. I think AIs will get really good at interpreting our gestures, don't get me wrong, but will they ever get to 100% accuracy? If not, then they're going to be very frustrating to use because every time they get it wrong, it'll stop you in your tracks. So the harder but more realistic way to design a UI is to understand that maybe the user doesn't want the computer to guess at the right thing all the time. Maybe they want more control than that. If the show has to assume that AI is just interpreting complex gestures completely automatically with almost no effort from the user, that's a score of zero because it's very easy to design a UI that way. It's much harder to design a UI that has what we call accurate heuristics. Every hand motion makes a specific predetermined thing happen in the UI. That's a difficult UI to design because it has to be consistent on a granular level. In short, the UI has to work in the real world to get a good score. Unfortunately, across a dozen scenes, the control score for the expanse is 4.3 out of 10. Next, we're going to look at something that's super important for UI, but often gets forgotten. Ergonomics. Usually when you think of UI ergonomics, you probably think of wrist pain, back pain, neck pain, and usually that's from using a mouse or keyboard, but if you've worked with room-scale virtual reality, it probably makes sense that the field of ergo is no longer limited to small joint and muscle motions. Every motion your body can create throughout the entire room is now fair game for use in a UI. And the question is, does the UI in this show make sense ergonomically? If the users of that hologram actually did those motions over and over again every day, would their bodies show any unwanted side effects? Would they fatigue quickly or injure themselves? 
For volumetric content, bad ergo tends to show up in the form of people extending their arms outward and leaving them far away from their bodies, probably because the camera picks up exaggerated gestures more easily. But subtlety is the key to good ergo, and The Expanse does pretty well with this. Notice in most gesture shots, all motions are fairly quick, relaxed, and do not require full extension of the arm. And crucially, most of the UIs are designed in a way that doesn't require holding your arms in an uncomfortable position for an extended time. So the ergo score for The Expanse is 8.5. And of course, this leads to our final score, and it has to do with narrative. This score is determined by how well the UI helps tell the story. Usually holograms are designed for eye candy first and foremost, but occasionally they also serve to expose the next layer of the plot. The Expanse gets a decent score of 7.6 here, because most of the hologram shots supplement our understanding of the dialogue really well. One shot in particular gets a really strong score here. You get a strong narrative score by telling the plot not just by supplementing the dialogue, but by making the plot clear even without dialogue. In this shot, the pilot of the Rossi needs to rescue his crew without turning his engines on, and he allows the computer to calculate a flight path, using the gravity of all the moons of Jupiter, to slingshot his ship to the right location. And all of that became super clear in a lot fewer words than I just spoke. Because if done right, a hologram can be worth a thousand words of dialogue. So in total, The Expanse walks away with a final score of 6.8. It might seem like a pretty harsh score for such a great show, but as we get further into these episodes, I think we'll see that my scoring system is pretty strict so that it can demonstrate when you've got a show that has a really strong UI on your hands. So thanks for tuning in to this episode of Sci-Fi UI. Subscribe if you want to be notified when the next episode drops. And remember, the future is now.